Listen to your elders' advice, not because they are always right, but because they have more experiences of being wrong. <laughs> That's anonymous, and a lot of people took credit for writing that. <laughs> Don will light our chalice here in the sanctuary this morning. Those of you at home are invited to light your own chalice now. Being an elder of the tribe is awesome, demanding and exhilarating. Elders have a purpose for living that's stronger than any physical disabilities that might slow them down. As the mind and spirit triumph over the body's infirmities, they work passionately to achieve their goals of social justice, environmental safety, and cross-cultural understanding. Before we sing the first hymn, let me remind our remote participants to leave yourselves muted. However, we want you and whoever is with you to sing as loud, big and loud as you like. Make it a joyous experience. So please stand in body and or spirit and sing the opening hymn, Let This Be a House of Peace, number 1054. This be a house of peace, of nature and humanity, of sorrow and elation. Let this be our house, a haven for the healing, an open room for questions and our inspiration. Let this be a house of peace. Let this be a house of peace. Let this be a house of freedom, guardian of dignity and worth how deep inside us. Let this be our house. divide us. Let this be a house of peace. Let this be a house of peace. Let all in this house seek truth. Where scientists and mystics abide in reverence Consecrate the atmosphere. Let this be a house of peace. Let this be a house of peace. Let this be a house of Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Community of Cambria. We're glad you've joined us today. 
Our UUCC sanctuary sits on the land that the Salinan and Chumash indigenous peoples historically inhabited. We honor their contribution to this region and give thanks for the opportunity to gather in faith on their unceded territory. Let us respect their legacy and protect their history as we occupy this sacred space. As Unitarian Universalists, we celebrate religious diversity and welcome all who journey in search of faith and spirituality. The UUCC is a lay-led congregation run by the democratic process. We invite speakers from different religious traditions and spiritual and scientific backgrounds to speak at our pulpit. We encourage presentations covering a wide variety of topics like you'll hear today and areas of interest that connect with the UU seven principles. Today's service centers around the first principle, we firm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. My name is Dolores Miera, and I'm your astounding, I didn't write that. <laughs> your astounding worship associate for this morning's service. <laughs> I would like to extend a special, thank you, Randy. I would like to extend a special welcome to today's guests and visitors. We're glad you joined us this morning. If you wish, please raise your hand if you would like to introduce yourself or your guest. Anybody willing to expose? <laughs> okay. If you're not on the mailing list, please visit the UUCC website at UUCCambria.org so that we can help keep you informed about all our activities. Members and friends, please check out the What's Happening, the eblast sent to you every week. This is a great way to keep up with our latest news. If you wish to see this or any of the past Zoom services, the recordings can be found on the UUCC website and on Facebook. So again, good morning and welcome to all. The affirmation is both a recognition of the nature of this community as well as a promise to which we aspire. Let us now sing the affirmation. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in freedom, and to help, and to help, and to help one. set aside this time for any special announcements that would be of interest to our UU community members and friends. Please keep your items short and to the point. If something needs more explanation, contact the person after the service. If you'd like to make an announcement, please raise your hand. And when Andy or I call your name, please step up to the podium or unmute yourself and speak. Kat, then Robert. Oh, <laughs> I guess I need to come off. Right? Hello. <laughs> um, I just want to put a shout out for my friend and our friend, Teresa Lees. Um, she is the proprietor of Global Family Farms down in San Luis Obispo, which is located on City Farm. Anyway, every Friday at the Peace Corner, we've decorated the dying tree, kind of symbolic, but uh, we stand for peace. I don't go every Friday. She's there every Friday from 3.30 to 5.00. If anybody would like to show up in person, it would be a great thing to support her and her her idea for peace. It's not it's nonpartisan. It's only for peace. Increase the peace. Morning, everybody. On Saturday, December the sixteenth. At 1 p.m., the Moving Toward Racial Justice Group will be watching the film Killers of the Flower Moon. The film tells the story of the murder of the Osage people and the investigation of those murders by the FBI, which was just getting underway at the time. Uh, 
this is a three and a half hour movie, so there will be an inter intermission. You're uh, welcome to bring finger food to share. If you have any questions, let my lovely wife, Nancy Tolan, know. Her contact information is in the directory. Thank you. 1 p.m. The Cambria Community Chorale uh, has its first performance this afternoon at two o'clock at the Community of Presbyterian Church. Um, it's going to be a very entertaining program. And will be the next week, Sunday too. Well, this is just a follow up to Wayne. I've got two tickets for this afternoon's performance. I can't go. If anybody wants them, let me know. Take one. Okay, there goes one. <laughs> My hearing too. <laughs> Oh, there goes another. Oh, wait a minute. We can have a Donnybrook over this if we can. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I am the uh, worship committee uh, chairperson and speaking on behalf of the committee. Uh, we like to keep our, our membership to about six or seven. And we're now going to be down to five. We're uh, losing uh, Mary Ann Anderson. Uh, she'll be spending most of her time in uh, Maui. So I'm putting out an invitation to anybody out there who'd be interested to uh, increase your uh, activity and engagement in our community. This would be a great way to do it. And we are a committee that stays very active all year round. Uh, that's not a threat. That's just how it is. <laughs> And uh, but it's a very important committee. So if you're interested, uh, please uh, contact me and uh, we'll make something happen. And of course, you're always invited to our meetings, which occur the fourth Monday each month at 430. Thanks. And it's fun. Yeah, we have a great time. And we get we get to talk about each other, about all of you. <laughs> Talk yeah. yeah, time for um, your annual PSA announcement. Um, it the uh, infectious diseases around the county and country are increasing. So if you're sick, please stay home. If you think you're sick, please stay home and consider wearing a masks in big groups. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, operations meeting this Thursday. We're on Zoom this time. We alternate uh, six o'clock. If you want um, the link, then contact myself or Dolores or Randy. Okay, it's a big committee that just talks about the use of the facility, and we have maybe a um, group coming up to sing here, and we have postcards and advertisings to talk about. So join us if you feel like it. Anybody else? Anybody on Zoom? Andy? Nobody with a hand raised. Okay. Back to you. I have one last one, so I thought this was inappropriate. For all of you that don't have this senior information guide, okay, <laughs> you can contact me and I will email you one. Okay, it's really a great resource. I mean, it's just fantastic if you've never seen it. And it does say 2018 to 2020, but it's the current one. It's <laughs> Still the current? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Next week, Martha Mora will present Rising Beyond Limits, a journey to self-empowerment and the power of community. Sharing together some of our personal and significant joys and concerns brings us closer as a faith community. We invite you to share the milestones that are deeply felt as part of your personal life. Express a gratitude or perhaps offer an acknowledgement. But please be mindful and considerate of all who come to worship with us this morning. Collective flames of these candles 
embody all the joys and concerns which may have gone unspoken today, but are also deeply felt in this community. The first reading is a quote by Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is an American astrophysicist, author, and science communicator. We are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, and to the rest of the universe atomically. The problem often not discovered until late in life is that when you look for things in life like love, meaning, motivation, it implies that they are sitting behind a tree or under a rock. The most successful people in life recognize that in life they create their own love. They manufacture their own motivation. For me, I am driven by two main philosophies. Know more today about the world than I knew yesterday and lessen the suffering of others. You'd be surprised how far that gets you. Let us enter a place of peace and serenity where you are one with your spiritual being. Be at peace within your space where the absence of all that is temporal is its most cherished gift. Let us enter the stillness. May we find the compassion and empathy we need to strengthen relationships. May we find ways to love each other well. May we not judge or condemn, but rather build a beloved community. The second reading was given to me by one of our speakers today. It is a poem titled, Laughter is Good for the Soul by Serenity Raven Wolf. When I was in my younger days, I weighed a few pounds less. I needn't hold my tummy in to wear a belted dress. But now that I am older, I've set my body free. There's the comfort of elastic where once my waist used to be. Inventor of those high heeled shoes, my feet have not forgiven. I have to wear a nine now, but used to wear a seven. And now about those pantyhose, they're sized by weight, you see. So how come when I put them on, the crotch is at my knee? <laughs> I used to wear these glasses as the print's been getting smaller. And it wasn't very long ago, but I was taller. Though my hair has turned to gray and my skin no longer fits, on the inside, I'm the same old me. It's the outsides changed a bit. Our speakers today like to read what an elder is, the wisdom of the elders. An elder is a person who is still growing, still a learner, still with potential, and whose life continues to have within it promise for and connection to the future. An elder is still in pursuit of happiness, joy, and pleasure, and her or his birthright to these remain intact. Moreover, an elder is a person who deserves respect and honor, 
and whose work it is to synthesize wisdom from long life experience and formulate this into a legacy for future generations. Please welcome our UUCC elders. Our speakers today will be Wayne Atto, Don Howell, Margaret Randall, Marsha Walters, and Judy Butler, in that order, by the way. Many have held board and committee positions here at UUCC, and all have been Unitarian Universalists for well over three years, and some up to 50. I, I know, what'd you say? Excuse me, 65. This is a, scratch that, okay, 65 years, wow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and so I've asked each of our elders to synthesize their wisdom into five concise minutes each. So please welcome our first elder, Wayne Apto. Good morning. Um, I'm thinking back um, as a youth and anticipating old age. I never thought I'd be here doing this. Okay. Um, um, it turns out that what I have to say um, comes across as advice, and I don't know really who the advice is for, except it looks like it's to a young me. Um, so ask for help. Once I was an adult, my father remarked, that I had never asked him and my mother for advice. And some weeks ago, during Joys and Concerns, uh, I, um, I said that I had been having a, a rough week. And within a, f a few hours, Several of you came to my rescue. Uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> a second bit of advice to me is give, I, I said, first was ask for help and then give help. Yesterday uh, was a very touching experience. I was taken to lunch with uh, someone I haven't seen or spoken to for 20 years, though we're both local. She'd been wanting to thank me and Peter for something we did for her and her siblings back when they were kids. Another bit of advice for me, trust your friends and family. I think I've been getting better at this. Unfortunately, I don't obsess about uh, the failures. Feed friendship and feed from it. Twice a month, I have a Zoom conversation with someone I met in kindergarten uh, and another I met in Sunday school at age 13. Later, he found me my first job out of college. I sang at their wedding 20 years ago. We're aging in similar ways and are sharing the highs and lows with more laughs than frowns. Another bit of advice to me is savor yourself. With each passing year, month, week, I've 
find myself um, more worthy of my regard. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, capitalize on serendipity. My career did not follow an established path by any means, uh, but instead I took advantage of uh, things that came in my path. I was wondering, as I was thinking about this, I was wondering about the word serendipity. Um, it turns out it didn't evolve out of language like so many words. It was coined um, in the 18th century. And it refers to a, a folk tale, a fairy tale um, called The Three Princes of Serendip. A British author um, coined the word serendipity to reflect the ways that those princes in the fairy tale were always making discoveries by accidents and sagacity of things they were not in quest of. I love the fact that serendipity has kind of a fairy tale connection can't quite hold it down thank you No, you're all back there. <laughs> uh, can, can you hear me okay? Sometimes my hearing aids throw me off, so yeah, okay, excellent. Well, yeah, distilling a whole lifetime of experience into five minutes is a real interesting exercise. <laughs> and, and actually, it's good because you can kind of, you, just, you cut away the, the, and you come up hopefully with some kernels of wisdom. Uh, one thing, uh, and I think from the previous speaker, from Wayne, uh, which is that m much of what our lives experiences are the same in many ways, um, but also it's, it's also they're also very different. For example, I know people who feel that life is something to be gotten through. I don't hold that view. I hold that life is something to be enjoyed, but you could, it could be. So what I'm telling you is stuff that is, that I found germane and that, that hopes that, uh, and uh, the other thing is the um, observation that Dolores made in the last reading, the, that there's sort of an obligation that us folks that we are now at this, at this vantage point, we do perhaps have an obligation to share our viewpoint with others. So where I started thinking, thinking, well, maybe this is a little presumptuous, since most of you are probably almost as old as I am. Uh, you know, but in the other, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> however, yeah. so I, this is a good opportunity, and I appreciate to to help to fulfill my obligation to uh, to to my fellow humans. Um, it's been almost two years since I turned eighty, and I have to tell you, it was a surprise. I really did not expect to be that old. In fact, it took me about nine months before I finally became comfortable with it. Now, it isn't that I was, oh my God, I'm 80, but it's, oh my heavens, I'm 80. You know, it's like, <laughs> so, and uh, I think part of that is that when I was young, very young in my 20s, uh, I really didn't think I was going to live beyond 30. On the other hand, I also didn't think I was going to die. Now, as it turned out, you know, I was I was musing uh, not too many weeks ago because this this is wisdom thing has been on my mind now for a while. Uh, I, I go down and assist at a music class in Santa Barbara at UCSB, uh, and I happened to be uh, sitting with the students as we were waiting for the class to start, and I, we, I was kind of musing about this aging business, and I mentioned that same thing about how you 
when you when I was young, I didn't really think I was going to live to be very old, but I also didn't expect to die. They were all nodding. Oh yes, oh yes. So uh, what I, what that shows me is that is something maybe that's sort of common to a lot of us. It's it's it is part of our experience, and that was kind of reassuring, and I didn't feel so bad. Um, the other thing, and um, uh, the men's group has heard some of this before, because as I became 80 and started, I was sort of taken with the wonder of it all, you know, and, and the surprise. And one thing I noticed, and remember this is each person's experience is different and it will change over the years also. But at this point in life, I, I found that I was actually getting this sort of sense of excitement. Uh, and it reminded me of when I was very, very young, that each day was an adventure. And now each day is an adventure. So there's a lot of similarity. What's happening is it's going in reverse, but it's still very similar. So everything is an adventure. Birthdays are becoming more and more important. Uh, my body is changing. I, don't, I, I wake up in the morning and wonder, well, what is working today? You know? <laughs> so, so this is it's so it, it, it's just an observation, and and uh, I can tell from your reactions that maybe that's not too unusual. Um, I, so I did distill things down as much as I could uh, to some things that might be of use to others. So I have a few observations. First is that the world, this existence that we have, this life, is all amazingly and endlessly interesting. Absolutely fascinating. The second point is that change is constant. Change is always happening. Every, nothing stays the same. Uh, my mother-in-law had a, a, a saying, which uh, I sometimes, especially when I'm horribleizing about something, you know, like, <laughs> like oh my God, we're all going to die, uh, that, uh, that nothing is ever quite as bad or quite as good as you think it's going to be. It doesn't mean you can't have unanticipated uh, bad fortune, but that is true. That has been true in my experience, and it helps. The other, there are other two points that have to do mostly with understanding people. And one, and, and these actually, uh, this was part of what I learned in running for office and, and serving, uh, is, is that people are complicated. They are very complicated. Nobody is all one thing. The MAGA Republican may love their children. They may be fine for their neighbors. Uh, what I found is that people that, when, even if I find them a little annoying, I, I actually grow to like them. And people that I, whose views I do not necessarily share, as I work with them, I find that I actually grow to admire and respect them. So that's, and that's that complexity that people are. And the other thing, which has to do with understanding people and the world, is that perspective is absolutely important. You cannot understand things if you don't understand the point of view from which you are standing or the point of view of others. It, it helps then in understanding uh, when people appear to be irrational. Sometimes if you, if you can figure out, if you know where they're coming from, that crazy behavior actually makes sense. And if you can get to that point, it means that maybe you can communicate. So that, that's very, very useful. So perspective. Um, and then I have also noted, uh, as I'll finish, with some advice. Hmm, that's all right. I uh, seem to have lost my note, but that's OK, because there's uh, four points. One, it helps to maintain an attitude of gratitude. This, these are the things that help me through. <laughs> An attitude of gratitude. Another thing is the um, indulge and encourage, indulge your curiosity, stimulate your curiosity. The more that I learn, the less I know, and it's just amazing. F three, <laughs> I know I can remember that one. Um, Okay, I'll just go on to the fourth because I see my time is almost up. Uh, this is this is for those that are um, perhaps younger, and also for those that are um, that are thinking about retirement. And that is, don't plan on dying young. You're far better off if you just approach life. If you live to be old, so much the better. And if you don't, well, that's okay too. But you don't want to have the reverse happen to you. And, and it's surprising. And again, may you all be surprised on your 80th birthdays 
and, and may you all enjoy, you know, as we go forward. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Am I? Am I? Tr oh, I'm on. When I was young and full of hope, I washed my face with ivory soap. And now I'm old, no hope for me. I wash my face with P and G. P and G was Procter and Gamble's harsh laundry soap. <laughs> um, in my life, I've learned some things. Before I started school, I learned to roller skate, and I learned to tie my shoes. I can still tie my shoes. Uh, then school started. I learned, I went from kindergarten through elementary school, high school, college, followed by numerous workshops, lectures, and additional classes. I had lots of friends who taught me lots of things. I traveled back and forth across the country. And I'm sure I learned a lot of things which I've forgotten at the moment. And then, well, um, I can't remember what goes next. Well, whatever it was, I finally got to as old as I am. I'm 91. and. What I've learned over all those years is on a trip to Winnipeg, Canada, I went to the zoo when I was about 60, and uh, I saw a camel for the first time in my life. I had no idea they were so tall. Now, okay, but my memory is sort of missing, and also a lot of things are missing, like taste. I used to taste food that was delicious or terrible, but I ate it. Now food is either sweet, salt, sour, or bitter, and it has a texture, smooth, creamy, crunchy, crispy, tough, and, and lumpy. <laughs> Who would have thought that tough and lumpy would add to my culinary enjoyment? <laughs> and a sense of smell. I used to smell the world after a, a fresh rain, oh, and the world smelled so delicious. Now it just smells clean. No, no, no smell really. And a rose, I used to love the smell of a fresh, freshly opened rose. Now, to smell it, I have to cram my nose right into it, where I am likely to find a bumblebee. And if, <laughs> and if I inhale, I'm likely to have a bumblebee in my nose. So now I look at the rose from a distance and remember how it used to smell. Well, something else that's fading is eyesight. I look at all of you and you're all very fuzzy, very, very fuzzy. No one has a clean edge. No, no shiny tops are smooth, they're all fuzzy. Um, and one, one Sunday, I look, I went from my little perch in the back. I saw a woman walk in, and I stared at her. I think, I think I met you last week, did I? And then I noticed I was staring, so I sat back and afterward apologized to her for staring at her. I said she was so fuzzy, I really couldn't see who she was. And she said, I'm 17, 17 years old. I thought she was off by a few decades, but I wasn't sure. Uh, and then, let's see, what else? Um, um, that was eyesight, right? <laughs> and then, uh, well, this is on my last page. Let me see what it says. I, I, when I was a kid, I had friends my own age. I always had friends my own age, no matter where I lived, as friends my own age, all the way through school and after school. Then I developed older friends, had friends my own age, and younger friends, and that continued on for many years. And then I had friends my own age and younger friends. And then I had younger friends. What happened to the friends my own age? 
They sit in decorative urns on people's mantelpieces, or their ashes stick to my shoes as I walk through the garden. So with all the diminishing of things through the years, why do I still want more? I'm done. Move me back. That's fine. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to put your notes up there. Yeah. My halting step is due to a, a fall, not infirmity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's great. When I was asked to speak on the wisdom of the elder, I wondered, why me? <laughs> I am not particularly wise. I have learned something of my time in my time on this earth, but I don't feel wise. I came across some things shared by a lady in her 70s, which I agree with, so I will share some with you. The sayings of the Jewish Buddha. If there's no self, whose arthritis is this? <laughs> be here now, be someplace else later. Wherever you go, there you are. Your luggage is another thing. <laughs> Do not wish for perpetual health or a life without problems. What would you talk about? <laughs> yes, I have regrets. There are things I should have done. There are things I didn't do, and I am happy to have done. Life goes by quickly, so what you do can you do today? Do. Live for today. Say all the things you want your loved ones to remember. Life is a gift. The way you live, <clears throat> the way you live your life is a gift. Live it well. Enjoy it today. Do something be to, that's fun. Be happy. It seems like yesterday that I was young, and yet in a way it was eons ago. <clears throat> Where did the years go? I am into the winter of my life, and it catches me by surprise. Time has got a way of moving quickly, catching you unaware of the passing years. Good fortune comes from experience, and a lot of that comes from bad judgment. <laughs> Live simply. Love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, and leave the rest to God. See the sunrise, watch the sunset. What a lovely meditation. Age gracefully is a euphemism for looking old, but still thinking, holding on. Eleanor Roosevelt said, beautiful people are an act of are, are an art, excuse me, beautiful young people are an act of nature. Beautiful old people are works of art. <laughs> Aging is not easy, no matter the age you are, 60, 70, or beyond. Aging with grace is possible if we give ourselves permission to do so. <clears throat> People need to learn that their actions do affect other people. Be careful what we say and do. It always, it's not always about you. Life is about us. We need to think about what we do and say that affects those around us. It's good to make yourself, you're sure your wants and feelings are validated. It's equally important to be sure those of others are as well. Getting old is not easy. 
regardless of age, leaving us feeling left out or left behind. Be thankful for what our bodies allow us to do. Be, comp be compassionate with ourselves. And as we enter our new, new place, new phases of our life, we are wired for connections and they need tending even more as we age. We may not notice wrinkles and gray hair as we age, but these are only signs of change. Beauty is found in all faces and bodies. Be compassionate when you look in the mirror, just as <clears throat> we, we are a new, in a new phase of our lives. Be thankful for what we, we are still to be. Be kind to ourselves, be compassionate, and pass that on to others. Be patient with yourself and one another. Remember, God loves us all. You don't need to. You don't think? No. Right? Oh, okay. What do you think? <laughs> right out. I like any power I can get. Okay. Oh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning. Good morning. Get organized here. Take the paper tips out. Okay, I debated how to come here and talk about wisdom. So I decided the best way to impart any wisdom I have garnered over the years is to send a letter to my now eight year old granddaughter, Harley. Whatever she, when it, whether she takes any of this to heart will remain to be seen. However, as a grandmother, I will feel I have helped do my part in giving her a few things to think about. So here goes. Dear Harley, as grandma has lived a full 82 years, and I still don't believe that. <laughs> I'm really only 12. <laughs> and I think an interesting life full of mistakes and a few good ideas. I wanted to let you know four things that I think will help you along your way. The first thing that I realize now is so important is to have goals. Without goals, you will just drift along and find you are never going to be where or what you wanted to be. Until I was much older, I just let life do to me rather than letting me do to life. So set goals, small ones and larger ones. Hopefully the larger ones will include education, which will help you get to your goals much easier. The second thing I have found that works out in the long run is perseverance. Sometimes you just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep going, even when you think it is all stacked against you. Life will hand you some obstacles and heartaches, but if you just put your head down and trudge on through, you will come out the other side. And remember your grandmother's life motto, this too shall pass. It always does. Please develop passions for things, not things to buy, but things to believe in. There are so many causes in this world that will need your help, whether you are saving whales or forests or birds, or just believe wholeheartedly in something. Volunteer, march, hand out literature, but volunteer and get involved. You will widen the edges of your life and meet new people. If a political cause speaks to you and your heart, work for it. You will never regret it. Lastly, and most importantly, laugh. Laughter will get you through so many challenges in this life. I already love that you bring joke books with you when you come to visit, and that you especially love ones that are ironic or puns on words. I believe you have inherited this 
from your great grandmother, well, and maybe me. Some families have the laughter gene and some don't. I, I know that because my husband's family never gets anything. I, they, just, they just stare at me. <laughs> there she goes again. I always think when people are laughing, they're generally not killing each other. <laughs> but spreading laughter is the next best thing to laughing yourself. When you set out to spread laughter, you're also spreading joy, happiness, and love for other people. It has long been considered the best medicine. If you can inject laughter into other people's lives, you will be giving a gift that is priceless, one that allows people to focus on well, I lost my place here. You allow people to focus on the joy of living instead of always seeing the hardship and challenges. And lastly, laugh at yourself. We are all made, we've all made our shares of dumb bunny mistakes. Okay, grandma's gonna stop here. I hope these four wisdoms can help you navigate life. And remember that no matter how you go in life, I will always love you. And to end this wisdom talk, I wanted to pass on something I read the other day. The article said women who are elders are invisible. Well, I take issue with that as I'm here and I'm visible. So let me state to quote Dylan Thomas, I will not go gentle into that good night. <laughs> Well, thank you to each of our elders giving their wisdom to us. Totally appreciate that. Very wise. This morning's offering will now be given and received. Please remember that we are a self-sustaining congregation and provide all financial resources for our many ministries. We recognize the spiritual value of generosity and invite you to participate. If you're viewing this service remotely, please use one of the methods shown on the screen. Thank you. Our thanks for all gifts given and received for the work of this community. Please stand in body and or spirit and sing the closing hymn, Pass on the Light by Cliff Harden. See one tiny spark, still small and bright, with hands cupped around to shield its light. A single flame, burn of desire, faces turn toward its glow. Pass on the light, pass on the light within these walls. Steady and strong, pass on the light, pass on the light from night to dawn. Carry it on. 
The circle of light grows as it's passed from young hands to old and back again, sharing youth's wonder, wisdom of age, spreading love as it glows. Pass on the light, pass on the light within these walls, steady and strong. it. <laughs> we changed it. <laughs> Thank you. As we prepare to extinguish the chalice, let us recite the valediction. The flame of this chalice will no longer burn today, but the light of the flame within our hearts continues to shine brightly, illuminating the love felt in our community. Please extinguish your chalice at home now. This is an original. <laughs> now let's form a circle and join hands for the closing words. <laughs> In the words of Clarissa Pincola Estes, I hope that regardless of your age, you will go out and let stories happen to you and that you will work them, water them with your tears and your laughter till they bloom, till you yourself burst into bloom from the beginning of your life right to the very end. Thank you.